In today's globalized world, religious leaders wield significant influence shaping economic policies in countries across the globe. Take for example countries like Israel and Iran where rabbis and ayatollahs have a direct say in the government's economic policy. The United States and Brazil, while more secular, are not immune to the sway of religious leaders influencing public opinion on matters ranging from taxation to environmental regulations. However, despite the apparent influence of religion, a closer examination reveals that modern scientific theories often take precedence. When Ayatollah Khamenei for instance must make a crucial decision about the Iranian economy, he won't find the necessary answers in the Quran. The economic realities of the 7th century Arab world hold little relevance for modern industrial economies and global financial markets. Instead, Khamenei and his aides must turn to modern economic theory drawing on the ideas of thinkers like Karl Marx, Milton Friedman and Friedrich Hayek. Once a decision is made, religious knowledge and authority are used to frame the policy in a religious context, presenting it to the masses as the will of a higher power. Yet when we compare the economic policies of Shiite Iran, Sunni Saudi Arabia, Jewish Israel, Hindu India and Christian America, the differences are surprisingly minor. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, religious thinkers of various faiths criticized modern materialism, soulless capitalism, and the excesses of the bureaucratic state. They promised a new socio-economic system, based on their eternal spiritual values, but despite numerous opportunities, the most significant change they've managed to make to modern economies is largely symbolic, adding a religious emblem to the edifice of existing economic structures. The reason for this lies in the reinterpretation of religious texts. The Quran, for example, can be interpreted to justify any economic policy chosen by a skilled scholar, transforming it from a source of true knowledge to a source of mere authority. The real solutions to difficult economic dilemmas are found in the works of economic theorists like Marx and Hayek, not religious texts. Religious leaders may use their authority to frame economic policies in a religious context, but the actual policy making is grounded in modern economic theory. Christianity for instance does not bind its followers to any specific economic system. A Christian could be a capitalist or a socialist. And while some of Jesus' teachings might hint at communism, these were largely overlooked during the Cold War by capitalists. Essentially, there is no such concept as Christian economics. These principles, like those in the Bible, are not necessarily in line with modern economic theories. Mahatma Gandhi, for instance, was inspired by the Vedas to envision an independent India as a federation of self-sufficient agrarian communities. However, this vision was not compatible with the realities of modern economics, and today, it lives on mostly in the form of Gandhi's image on Indian currency. In reality, modern economic theories often overshadow traditional religious doctrines. It's not uncommon to interpret even religious conflicts in economic terms. For instance, some argue that the troubles in Northern Ireland between Catholics and Protestants were fueled more by class conflicts than religious differences. So how does religion influence our approach to the pressing questions of the 21st century? For example, should artificial intelligence be given the authority to make decisions about human lives? You'd be hard-pressed to find a Muslim or Jewish position on this. Instead, you'll find people from all religions on both sides of the argument, interpreting their religious texts to justify their stance. It's true that religious groups may solidify their views on certain issues, turning them into seemingly eternal dogmas. Take for instance, liberation theology of the 70s which painted Jesus in the light of a revolutionary figure like Che Guevara. Similarly, religious interpretations can be woven into the discourse around current issues like global warming. For example, American evangelical pastors have incorporated opposition to environmental regulations into their sermons, while Pope Francis has become a vocal advocate against global warming, invoking the name of Christ. By the year 2070, it could be that your stance on environmental issues is significantly influenced by whether you're evangelical or Catholic. Evangelicals might be seen driving gas-guzzling SUVs, while devout Catholics may prefer electric cars with bumper stickers proclaiming, burn the planet and burn in hell. Yet, while they may cite biblical passages to defend their views, the true roots of their differences are more likely to be found in modern scientific theories and political movements, not in the scriptures. This suggests that religion might not have as much to contribute to the great policy debates of our time as we might think. As Karl Marx suggested, it could merely be a veneer, 